Hi, it's T Quilts, and today I'm here to do a butler video. Uh, butler is made by Quilt Easy, and today we're going to talk about how to do borders. I'm going to talk about borders that have a full block on the end, as well as borders when you are doing them where they have a partial block on the end. And that technique is called point to point. So I will talk to you later. So I am showing you a section where I've already started quilting some of these rows here. And this row here, I am doing the swirls. These swirls I found on a video by Jamie Wallen. And I got those into my string rows. And then here is where I am doing the point to point on the borders. And you can see where with the four patches, how this is a complete block. And so I've got that part situated. It's easy to do something when it's in a full block. And then I want to also show you how to do this same technique when you have a partial block. As you can see here, this is my triangle, but here on the end, I have a half square triangle. Half of this actual triangle is left. So I'm going to show you how to set these items up. So I'm going to roll this quilt, as you can see, so we can get down to the next row. I'll do a little sewing showing you as I'm making these swirls from Jamie as well. So I'm back. I have rolled the quilt top, and I am now going to do the freehand spirals here. And I'm just going to let this video run. Hopefully I don't have to speed it up. If it's less than five minutes, I'll go ahead and let it run. If it's more than that, then I'll speed it up a little bit toward the end. And here we go. I'm going to just do a tacking stitch right here. And I am also going to put my needle down into the down position. And I want to get this little lint off. All right, so we're now going to go ahead and quilt the spirals. As I said, I learned these spirals from watching a Jamie Wallen uh, video. He did a tutorial on these on YouTube. So here we go.
So we'll just do a quick little walk back down the quilt frame here, just so you can see that. And we will also now trim our starting stitches. I just come back and wait till the end because if I'm doing free motion, I just keep going. <laughs> I don't want to stop once I get into my groove. So that's the row for the, the string row. And now we have to do this row here that's for our blocks. So I am going to have to get another camera so I can show you what's going on at the top because my camera on my machine is not going to be able to show you everything that I'm about to do here. So, so here you can see where I have this row that I want to now quilt and I want to put a design in here that Butler is going to stitch out and so I am now going to do the point to point on this. So first thing I need to do for point to point is I just need to tell it uh, what I want to what pattern I want to stitch so I'm going to go up to my screen here see if I can zoom in a little bit so I'm gonna go over here and I know you see this layout box but that layout box is just anywhere it's not in aligned to anything right now it was the last row that I did when I did the quilting and that's going to actually disappear on us later but what I want to go over here and do is I'm going to do my four patches first. Those are full, so I don't need to do anything special. I just need to go over here to patterns and pull up the pattern that I am going to put into the four patch blocks. And my point to point loops three is already selected because it's what I've been using. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the OK. And it put it up here in this corner of the pattern layout box. And that's not going to matter when we're doing point to point. So the next thing I want to do, now that I have the pattern loaded, and I know you can't see it, I can't even see it, <laughs> is we want to go to this point to point button over here. Right there, that's highlighted. That's point to point, and it's going to pull up this screen. And down here, you've got the point to point where you want to start and end. It's already in start mode, so I don't have to hit it right now. But then I have this plus button. That's what I'm going to be hitting every time I say hit the plus. Just know that this is the button that I'm hitting because we're going to be down here on the quilt, and I'm going to be showing you how I'm moving the quilt, um, how I'm moving the machine so that it knows exactly where I want it to put that. Okay, so over here, you can see where you have pattern height. Down here on my quilt top, I have measured from here to here, and I came up with like five and three eighths. And because piecing is not exact, I've decided to go with a five inch height. So from here to here, I have given it a five inch height. So that's where, this pattern height all right so I had my battery go out so as I was saying I just want to make sure that you know that you need to change the height of this and it's only coming in at the correct height because it remembers since I haven't cut my machine off this height if I cut my machine off and pull this pattern in again it's going to come in at the default height for that pattern so this is very critical here okay so I am going to go ahead and point you down and remember when I'm saying I'm hitting the plus sign this is what I'm going to be hitting because there is no reason for me to run two cameras for this because this is just the only thing that we're going to be hitting until we get to the end and we're going to hit this to end our point to point so let me point you down And you also, I'm going to leave you up close here for these three points so that you can see that because I am going to skip after I do these three points because they're all the same all the way down the quilt top and my camera is not going to go that far without me moving it every three, um, four patches. So keep that in mind as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to move my machine 
into the point of this four uh, patch here. And so I'm going to make sure that my needle is right over that position. And I am going to hit the plus on the screen. And then it says on the screen, select the next spot. Select the next pattern point. And so I'm going to go in between these two four patches because, as I said, our piecing isn't perfect. And so I am just trying to get it in the middle so it knows what space I want. And I'm going to hit plus again. Now, before I hit plus, I just wanted you to see I'm in between these four patch uh, units here. And when I hit the plus... And when I hit the plus up on this screen, this pattern is going to now jump to the positions that I just told it to. So when I hit this plus, you saw that pattern jump from up in that left, upper left corner down to where it actually is on my frame down below. And when I go back down again here, I've just hit that plus, so I've got one of those patterns. So now I'm just going to move my machine. I've got to get in here so I can see where my needle point is around the camera. And I'm going to hit the plus. Pattern number two has jumped up on the screen connected with pattern number one. So now I'm just going to slide my machine down again in between those intersections of the four patches and hit the plus. So I'm just going to show you up on the screen where I've got those three units right there ready to be stitched out so I am just going to continue this all the way down this quilt top and uh, I will see you at the end when we go to end this pattern alright guys so I have put in my next to last point that's where my machine is at this point and so when I take this down I'm going to go ahead and move to my final point here and you can't see it but this is my final point my actual camera is sitting right there and I'm holding you in my hand as well and I'm trying to see over the needle and then once I get that into the correct position since this is my last point for the machine here instead of hitting plus right here I'm going to hit the point to point and then it says select the next point for this pattern chain so I have just ended that and you can see that by the red end uh, sign right there now if I had another row right above this that had this same pattern I could do another whole start and stop system and I'm going to show you that when I do the triangles because I am going to program this row of triangles as well as this row of triangles so I'll show you how you do that so only thing I've got to do now is just go out here to home and tell it that I am ready to start stitching this so I'm going to cut on the camera down below so you can just see this stitch out Alright, so I'm back and one important thing to note is when I was free motion quilting, I had my needle position down. It is very important when you are doing digitized or computerized quilting that you have your needle up. So I have made sure that I've got my needle up because if it needs to do any jump stitches, it's going to rip and tear your fabric. You should already know that by now, but I want to make sure that if you are doing a design where you've gone from computerized to hand uh, sewing that you need to make sure that you get that needle up and down at the appropriate times and so I accidentally started hit the start button by mistake all I did was tied off my stitch and it is starting the pattern for the first point to point design that I put in so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the start button so it can continue to quilt And this also happens a lot. I have run out of thread. So I need to tell it up at the top that I have a thread break on my machine. So it'll let me move the machine so that I can get some length on my fabric ties here. 
and then I need to change my thread and then I'll be back when I do that all right so I'm glad that things like this happen when we're videotaping because it's a good teaching opportunity so my thread broke right here right here when I was stitching and so what I do is I go back about a half to three quarters of an inch and I just place this over where my where I wanted to restart stitching and then I'm going to hit the check mark and it's going to move directly onto the line all I did was eyeballed it to get it close and then I'm, it says is this where you want to restart and I'm gonna hit the check mark and then it's letting me pull up my bobbin thread here And I'm also going to move this thread over since I know it's going to stitch down this way by the holes in my fabric. And now it's going to, I'm going to hit the check mark to pull up the bobbin thread, then press OK. So that's my check mark. I can start clipping my threads here. And then I'm just going to leave you with this machine. Again, piecing is not accurate. And so it's going to eyeball where it's putting it into these positions based on me putting in these start and stop points to my design. So sometimes it's gonna be spot on into the design. Sometimes it may be an eighth to a quarter of an inch off in the design. Okay, for some reason it did not register when I clicked the last end point for my <laughs> design. So I am up on my screen. I'm going back into edit and I'm going to go to point to point and I am going to just add this last point in. So I'm at the point where it stopped. I'm going to hit the plus and then just go over here and hit it again. So you might want to hit the plus button and then hit end when you do your point to point. It's It's been a couple of days since I've worked on this and I couldn't remember that. So remember to hit the plus button and then hit the, to end your point to point to keep everything straight here. So now I'm gonna go back 
and we're gonna go to home well we're gonna go to back to edit and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the ones that I have already put in and um, at least delete the one before because I want to show you how to delete the patterns so I'm only going to delete the one before so now I'm going to go to home and I'm going to tell it to go stitch but I'm going to tell it to set start and I am having it set the start at this last point to point that I need to quilt out and so it's ready for me to pull up my bob and it's already there because I never cut it and so now it's just going to do another tie off here and then stitch this last design so i like to keep this stuff in the videos when this type of stuff happens so you know what to do for yourself and when i program the next row i'll make sure that i hit the plus button before i continue to hit that in the point to point That's my last one stitching out. Now it's going to do my tie off stitches. So now I'm going to cut this thread and then I'm going to get the head of the machine back down to the other end so we can program in the next part. So I am going to cut you here for a second. All right, so now we're back up on our screen and we've got all of these designs in here. I need to now take all of those designs out so I'm going to go to the edit screen and then on the edit screen it's going to highlight your pattern and all you have to do is go over here and hit minus to minus all of those patterns out it is critical that you do this step otherwise it's going to think it's part of the next sewing cycle all right so now because we have a design where we have a partial area here. We've now got to go in here and tell it that this is our layout. So we definitely need to do a layout on this. If you're doing a regular border and you're doing point to point, you don't have to do a border layout. But because we're going to have to do half of a design here, we need to tell it exactly where this layout starts and ends. So in order to do that, back up to the top here. we're going to go to layout when I'm on the layout screen let's see how many layouts do I have I have just the one so we're great with that so now what I want to do is hit a plus right here to tell it that I want to do a layout okay so that other box you saw was my the area of the quilt that I could quilt in so I've hit the plus for the layout button down here. I am going exactly where the seam starts and end. I am going to find that position because it's telling me to set the first point in the pattern box. And so I am over that area and now I am going to hit the plus on the screen. I'm going to move down here at this intersection where this, I want to make sure that this line is my line where it's going to start and stop stitching i'm going to put my dot over where this these two rows intersect along this border i'm going to hit the plus again not the check mark the plus because i need to go down to the far end of this quilt and do the exact same thing down there so you're not going to see the detail but i'm just going to show it to you You'll see the machine move. I'm down here, right over that intersection, looking at where my needle is. I'm hitting the plus, and then I'm going to go up and do the exact same thing at the top. And this is where I'm going to hit the check mark to end. So now up on the screen, I now have a pattern box that's a uh, layout two of two and this is exactly where that row is so that it knows when I want to crop these ends it knows exactly where those ends are if you don't do that you cannot crop your pattern effectively
Now let me show you one more thing down here on the table down here. So the first thing I did when I was making this design is that I measured how long it is from here to there. And it is going to be an approximate again because they're not perfect. But my measurements was five and three fourths inches. So keep that in mind, five and three fourths inches from here to here. So what I want to do is put my five and three fourths inch right here at this intersection right here, keeping it straight. And I want to go out there, keeping it straight. And I just want to put a little mark out here with my chalk so that I know where that intersection is. And I don't know if you can see the chalk mark here. It's going to come off as I'm quilting. And then I want to do the same thing on the top and bottom here and also down on the end of the quilt top. So five and three quarters at the point. And then use my marker. So I'll do that down on the other end and be right back. All right, so I have everything marked now. These are actually going to be my start points. It's important that we mark those. So now back up on the screen, we are now ready to add our pattern in. So we're gonna go to edit. Actually, we're gonna go to patterns, I'm sorry. And I've got the other design in a different folder. So I'm, I don't think it'll come up under recent. Let's see if it will. No, point to point does not come up under recent. So I'm going to go back to patterns and just uh, hit on filter. And then I want to go to point to point. For some reason, I got two different folders. I'm going to have to combine. This is the design here. It's called point to point fun 6A. It's what I want to put into that triangle section. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that pattern by hitting the check mark. And now you can see that pattern is up on my screen. Again, it's way smaller than I want. It's not even in the right position. And when I put the first point to point in, it's going to jump down. You saw that on the other screen. So I now want to go into point to point. So I'm going to hit that and you can see my point to point is not highlighted. Again, you see my plus button and you see this size. The size is coming up at five because that's the last size that I put in. For this one, we want this one to be 2.5. So I'm going to type that in 2.5 and hit the check mark. So now the height down here is actually like two and three fourths, but I'm doing two and a half on my uh, triangle height. So now I'm going to move my machine head. So I'm moving my machine head so that my needle is over this first plus that I chalked in because I don't have that. This is where this triangle point would meet if it was another pattern here. So that's where I'm going to hit the plus button. And then I'm going to move into this actual point that I wanted to stop that pattern and hit the plus button. Now, up on the screen, up on the screen, you can see where this is my layout box, but my piece is hanging off the end. And that is exactly what we want. Okay, so now I'm going to continue to add points all the way down. So I am going to do that again. You all know you're not going to be able to see me do this entire thing. So I've just hit that point button for that one. And so I am just going to work my way down the quilt top hitting the button. Plus. Plus. Alright, so now we're at the, I just hit the plus here 
for a design and remember we've got to go out here to where I've got that chalk plus mark and that's where I want to hit my final plus on the screen and then hit this button here to end the point to point okay and then you see where it says select the next start chain I'm not done I'm going to go ahead and move my machine up to the next plus and I'm going to hit the plus button Then I'm going to move it into the next position and hit the plus. Okay, you saw up on the screen, let me make sure this is real clear here. Zoom in so you can see this. When I hit the first plus button, it looks like nothing happened. When I hit the second plus button, it dropped the piece into position and now all I got to do is go back down and notice that it also rotated all on its own I didn't tell it to rotate or anything it's smart enough to know what's going on which I really love <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and do this back down the quilt top and then I'll show you when it's stitching out okay. so I know I said I was going to come back when it was at the stitch out I was being a little premature <laughs> I need to crop these ends so you can see where this design here is the last one I put in it's already highlighted for me so what I'm going to do is go over here to the crop button which is right here and I'm going to tell it to do the first crop and it's going to take out the excess pieces so I'm going to now hit the design that's down here so we can highlight that one and I'm going to tell it to crop it as well and then when I hit the third design over to the left I want you to come back and look over here and you can see where that has been cropped to my layout box that's why it's important for you to have the layout box and so I'm going to continue that cropping again so I can get this other side and then this bottom one here is my last one I want it to crop all right so now that design is now ready to stitch out and again I'm going to leave you on with my GoPro I'm hoping that I've got enough battery for you all to see this entire thing remember to have your needle in the up position because it's going to do a jump stitch when it finished stitching here it's going to jump and do the next stitching so please keep that in mind alright so I'm down here with my GoPro now and I am going to go to home and I am going to go and we're going to hit the check mark so it can start stitching out this design so you can see this is where I told it that my layout box or approximate space of my layout box and so that's where it's going I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark it's going to do my tie off stitches and then it's going to start stitching the actual design and sometimes it changes the order of how it's going to do each one of these because our layouts have changed and our point to point positions have changed that's one thing I can't change in Butler is um, I guess I could change the order when we stitch out but you don't know the order until it actually stitch unless you're gonna run it with no with your needle not engaged but I just let it run and do what it wants to do that's why you need to make sure that you have your needle in the up position so I have about 68% of my battery left and I want this to run at least all the way down where it goes to the other side So if you're one of those people that like to watch machine quilting, this is for you
right, guys. So this is going to end this video. I hope it was helpful. Please leave your comments down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.